Get ready for the Girls on Games podcast, your weekly dose of news, reviews, and everything video games. Always served with a good helping of hype and just a pinch of salt. And now, your host, Leah. Hello and welcome to another Girls on Games podcast. My name is Leah. I'm the host of this show. This is episode number 431. Happy New Year, folks. Uh, We can still say that, even though we are starting a little late. Also, happy birthday to the one and only Catherine smith Bang. How you doing, girl? Thank you. I'm doing great. Yourself? I'm excellent. It's a a two-lady show here this evening. Yeah. We uh members of the of the crew who are out and about, they have stuff going on or dead disappointments early in the yeah. day. Not <laughs> something you want to start off. Not something you want to do <laughs> at the beginning of the year. Joelle, we feel for you. All right. Let's get into some housekeeping. Oh yeah. You probably want to know what we're talking about on the show this week. Um, because there's only two of us, we were gonna do our games of the year, but there's two of us, so you'd be missing half of the preferences. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to do like a year in review. We've done this before, so we're going to do it again and kind of like wrap up 2023 before we dive into everything that is 2024, which, uh, you know, games are already around the corner and we've got Fantasy Critic coming and everything. So before we do that, let's get into some housekeeping. I'd like to remind you that if you enjoy this show, you can subscribe. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and Podbean. If you'd like to get some GOG merch, you can do that by going to designbyhumans.com slash shop slash girls on games maybe you'd like to give us a tip maybe buy us a coffee you can do that by going to our Kofi. that's ko-fi.com slash girls on games Catherine, how were your holidays pretty quiet and i'm happy it was uh nice. because i had a full two weeks off mm-hmm. and um i went to somebody's house and i sat on their couch and they fed me I went to somebody else's house and I sat on their couch and they fed me. And then I came back and then I sat on my own couch and fed myself for a few days. Um, And yeah, that was pretty much it. Excellent. 10 out of 10. Highly recommend. That's the way it should be, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I had my uh, family in town. So it was a lot of trips back and forth between here and Mississauga uh, because I'm in Toronto proper. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the beginning. And poor Mike worked most of, of... the holiday season because he's in retail and guess yeah. what happens in holiday season yeah. retail makes the money uh but yeah i uh yeah parents were in town that was really nice hung out with my sister and her husband and his family as well and then uh yeah once they left on the 29th um chilled out a bit myself because mike was working in things played some games and stuff and uh celebrated the new year with john our buddy john and uh yeah now i went back to work on the second so wow you know Everybody is like, ooh, it's new. Happy New Year. Nice to see you. And I'm like, I've already been at work for almost a week. Yeah. <laughs> but it's been good. I've been getting to play some games and things like that. And it was like a nice slow burn back into everything. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I didn't yeah. get that. <laughs> yeah. Because I, know, t- I took last week off. So I just showed up and actually uh, a lot of people were off. Yes. Last week. So I only logged into about five team conversation that mattered mm. um, and about 23 emails. So I think it showed. What? Yeah. What? But I also. Came, I came back in two days. I had like, I was checking emails every two days. And then I came back in the second and there were 67 emails in there. But <laughs> I, I am checking. not. I am not a manager. Like I am. <laughs> I am. I got my task. I do my shit. And the my manager is on vacation until January fifteenth. So maybe that oh, has something to do. There you go. With my lack of emails, because she was like, "All right." Uh, just before she left, like on the twenty second, she was like, "Everybody's got what they need. You're gone. Whatever. When you come back, somewhere between the second and the eighth, you got tasks. Cool. If you run out of tasks, I don't know." She was like. Find an online learning thing. Uh, see you on Monday. The 15th. <laughs> so maybe that's why, like, it's been pretty quiet on my end. Um, yeah. But it's been, yeah, it's been a, it's been pretty slow. 
slow for us. But yeah, I have a a deadline for the end of the week. So today I was like trying to get some velocity going. Um, mm-hmm. I did a lot of uh, just staring at a blank canvas <laughs> and blank slides and PowerPoint just being like, just put your ideas on paper, girl. You can do it. It was by the afternoon. I was like, I had something going, but it was... Uh. It was just logo. I'm not gonna lie. Like uh, <laughs> she, she, she was not. She was not going full tilt. <laughs> and well, we're pretty much doing the same thing. We're gonna be doing this episode, looking back at last year and mm. kind of tying a nice bow around it, packaging up all our documents, make sure everything's closed up, and then getting into planning for this for 2024. Though we already started, but like you know, getting really in the weeds because the year's over. We can look at analytics, kind of check things out. So. So, yeah, it's so much different, like working in games because of that, because like what I finished early December Mm -hmm. um, is only going to be in the game like in March, Mm. like in. So I can't like I tied a bow to to it, but like when it ships, I have to like look at it again. (laughs) You're like, oh, yeah, I remember I did that. (laughs) Like six months later, like, hey. Cool. Okay. Um, it, it's really weird. And working on the live game, your stuff is in the game like much quicker than mm. you know people that work five years until the game is out. You know, mm-hmm. and even then, it's like it's when I worked in web and when I worked with you in media. Like I remember like tying up years in financial, and it was just like when it was done, it was done. Now it's just like it's done for now. <laughs> Like, until it goes live in the game, and then I have to, like, help with a bit of uh, tracking and feedback and things like that for this feature that I made. So it's, like, in March, what I did in November and December and October, I have to revisit in March of the following year. Wow. That's wild. You often forget, and you're like, oh, yeah, I did that. I, I think, like, the problem is by then I will be, like full tilt in the second feature I'm working on. Mm -hmm. Um, And this feature I'm actually building from scratch. Like um, sometimes I get like, sometimes like UI is just something in a long process. Mm -hmm. You know, game design had this idea and it's pretty crazy and whatever. And they're going to need UI to help with it. And then we kind of tackle what I'm doing right now is a UI first feature. So I have to be like at every step of the way, um, Mm -hmm. basically. So it's good. Like it's something that is, it's a good feature. Like I can't talk about it, of course, but I'll mention it once it's live in the game, once it's public, but like, it's the kind of thing that it's going to take me like six months to a year, but like three months as I'm like into this and we're like getting the process to start, it's going to be like, Stop. Remember what you did last last spring, last autumn, <laughs> autumn of twenty twenty three. Yeah, I'm like, oh, that, and that's why kids write documentation. Oh yeah, I am I am meticulous about recording things and documenting things and processes because our our problem is is a whirlwind of stuff going on all the time, and when something is a problem or someone has a question about something or whatever, and I have to go back and look at it, I don't remember. Because my brain's moved on. It's almost like when I used to go do exams and it'd be like, I'd memorize, memorize, verbal vomit onto the exam paper. And then, you know, yeah. out of sight, make out of mind. Room, make right? room in your brain for other for, stuff. For other stuff. Uh, and that people, happens a lot too. So I am yeah. like, I live by my notes. <laughs> yeah. People at work are like, how do you remember all this? I'm like, I don't. It's like, I just like took two minutes to, to check through my OneNote, found mm-hmm. what you asked me. Mm-hmm. And paste it in Teams. Yep. Makes it seem like the only thing I remember, yeah, it's where it's filed. I don't remember the actual information. Right, that's it. And the search functionality really yeah. helps. And uh, working on helping build a a new, more robust confluence area and everything. So, yeah. and, oh, conf- and I'm yeah. I'm a big confluence girl. I like, love confluence. Our UI UX confluence is up to date and it is well loved and i actually once i'm on the other side of this deliverable i need for the new feature um 
I got to send it like for feedback. Mm. So I'm actually going to have a bit of time to sit down and document the other feature that's going to be live in the game in March. Uh, I have all my notes. I have all the information. I just haven't had the time to actually build a Confluence yeah. page for it. So I'm like, this is what's going to happen. Because like six months, th- like three months down the line, I'm going to need that page for myself, mm-hmm. uh, basically. Yeah. No, I get you. Confluence. It's magical. Because, yeah, when you work Confluence, at a company as long as notion, you and I. Yeah. One notion. Notion. I, uh, and when you've worked at a company as long as I have and been through many iterations of stuff and people mm-hmm. come and ask you and they're like, why did we do this? And then I have to rack my brain and go back and look. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's why we did it. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's, it's kind of rare now someone sticks around with a company for... How long have I been with this? Almost 13 years now. So <laughs> I had I had a question about fonts. Did you really? And I was talking to my friend who works um who works like a, a service team, like one of the teams that like build tools for like internal for like Ubisoft. Yep. I was chatting to him about this and he's like, I know the guy who did that for For Honor. I think he still works at Ubisoft. Yeah. And he poked that guy on Teams, and then I got an email forwarded from that guy saying, oh, here's the information on the For Honor fonts uh, that you were asking. He forwarded me an email from 2016. (laughs) I am that person. I am that girl. I keep everything. And anytime they're like, ooh, how do I archive this properly? (laughs) I keep everything. It's just like... This dude was there to ship the game. I'm showing up fucking eight <laughs> years, like seven, eight years later. Like, yeah. anybody remember why we built the fonts this way? And that guy was in the background like, I do. <laughs> Perfect. That's what you need. That's what you need. Or and that's that why it's that important email. to, like, hold on to hold on to good talent, too, right? Like, let them move around, but hold on to good talent. Because uh, information transfer can be challenging. Because if someone does exit the company of their own fruition or something else, then it can be challenging to, like, hold on to that. And before fellow game devs get to me, yes, I copied the contents of that email on a Confluence page. Please and thank you. <laughs> Good stuff, Kat. Good stuff. All right. Uh, it is a new year. So Fantasy Critic is coming back. Uh, back for the 2024 season. Uh, so we are going to have the community draft on Sunday, January 14th at 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I have made an event in the Girls on Games Discord, so please come in. We'll go. In, we'll be going into the. I think I put it on the Wii Gaming chat. Mm-hmm. So we'll go in there and and do it on uh, on Sunday. Uh, if you can't join us but you still want to participate, you can actually go and select and prioritize your games that you want in order, and the automated machines will go and pick the game based on the order that you have, as long as not somebody else hasn't taken it already um, through the process. So, yeah, feel free to come hang out and, uh, and join the Community League. It was so much fun last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and we will be doing our podcast league uh, with the four of us. On the 27th, 22nd, we're going to record it, which is the episode that will release on the 25th. Why? Because we were supposed to do Game of the Year episode this week, and that's not happening. <laughs> so we'll do that next week, and then we'll do the Fantasy Critic Draft for the pod. Yeah. So yeah, the Podcast League, um, the Community League is going to be, uh, you got a little bit more options, because I know there's games coming out, like, I think Prince of Persia comes out on like the 18th. Yeah. So obviously that won't be available uh, to us. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's the same thing it we will did last be for the year. Community we one. Late. It will be the community one, but it won't okay. be for us for the uh, for the podcast. But that's fine. That's fine. I mean, for four people, like it's not as cut it's not throat. as hard. It's, yeah, it's not as hard to get games. Like that's where things got hard of the community league at the tail end of last year was like what's left when you have empty spaces and things like that Mm. right so so yeah it'll be it'll be fun though i'm i'm looking forward to it it's always a fun time and just nice you know even if uh you don't want to draft or play feel free to come in and listen to us in the chat you know yeah yeah if you're just like listening to the episodes and you want to keep up to date uh you can definitely join the discord and hang out Uh, Mm -hmm. also darth who helps us with this uh, especially mm-hmm. for the community one. He said that he'll be on at uh, half past noon EST. 
for any Perfect. noobs that have questions. Yeah, and we'll go through the whole pro- process. So, uh, thanks, Darth. Much appreciated for that. Okay. Um, actually, Darth had a question to add to the pod, but I think I'm going to save it for next week since this is only the two of us. Okay. So it was a pretty good one. So remind me of that for next week. Okay, Kat? That we have a, a good uh, community question, which, hey, if you folks want to ask us a question, give us like some kind of pie in the sky, you know, question at all uh, for us. You want us to kind of talk it through on the podcast? Uh Shoot me a DM on Discord or Twitter or wherever, um, or the Girls on Games Twitter, and uh, and yeah, we'll we'll bring it to the pod. Playing games, Catherine, did you play much over the holiday break? I did shit fuck all, oh. uh, except my daily games like Wordle, Connection, Squirtle. I did not. Uh, a, I was away from my console. Mm-hmm. B, I just wanted a real break. Um, however, I played myself because like, if I don't play games, I went full on into a social media back into an addiction. I spent way more too much time on TikTok, way too much time on Reddit. I'm like, I'm not on Twitter and Instagram anymore as much. I just replaced them with two. So I was like, this is unhealthy. Uh, no, look, Twitter is not what it used to be. I can no. tell you that. I actually was off of social... I just consume TikTok. Like, I'm starting yeah. to do it. Yeah. Like, I'm just trying to scroll. figure out how to build a GOG one. But just yeah. the scroll, I mean, I'm perfectly fine to do that. And I find that it's not as much as garbage content as you may think. Uh, yeah, but it's still my like... Feed, but there's a lot of dogs. A yeah. lot of dog tricks, as I'm but trying to teach Gibson. <laughs> when you think about, like, how it's, like, 30 to 3 minute... Con- 30 seconds to 3 minute content. Mm-hmm. And somehow I end up scrolling through it for, like two hours easy peasy um Mm -hmm. i'm like this this is great when i'm like you know i'm in the metro or i got like i'm waiting for my my pasta to finish cooking things like that but like if i'm left to my own devices with tiktok and or reddit Mm -hmm. um way too much time like i need (laughs) so uh i was actually chatting with my father's in-law's my father-in-law's girlfriend. Okay. So Pascal's parents are divorced and they're both like got new partners. Other significant others. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They were ta- she was talking about how she like got really into audiobooks. Like she loves to read, but she got really into audiobooks during mm-hmm. the pandemic and whatnot. And I was like, I should get back into reading. I should like let go of my phone and just read instead. And she was like, oh, I get everything through the library, even audiobooks. And I was like, that is fucking smart. So I signed up to the library well now and yeah so i got libby for english ebooks prenumeric for french ebooks but my local library does not have english books because it is very small so uh but they said if i wanted to get books from other libraries Mm -hmm. i could put in a request and it takes two to three weeks and she was like um yeah just check out like libraries out in the west island they have like really good English book collections, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to do physical books for French from the library, and then I'm going to do English books. I'm going to do e-books because mm-hmm. I, I don't feel like managing. Like, can you go over there and get me this Hank Green or, and or this John Green book? Um, I'm like, you know what? I'll do it. Uh, so, yeah, I decided to try to replace my TikTok scrolling time and my... Uh, reddit scrolling times with reading books so let's see how it goes Hmm. um already uh discovered uh recipe books how have i not signed up to the library just to get recipe books is beyond me because they don't have like fucking ads or like 23 paragraphs of seo telling you why it's the best pie on earth it's just you open the page there's a (laughs) picture of the pie the ingredients and how to make the pie you scroll for a week and you're like where's the goddamn ingredient there's no (laughs) jump to recipe in a recipe book you turn the page oh recipe there she is the second page another (laughs) recipe um so i grab a recipe book and i grab two novels i just kind of like I ask for recommendation from friends and like on Twitter and stuff. And I have a list of books that interest me. But like for my first time, I just kind of like went through the alleys 
and um, they had clearly marked which books are uh, Canadian from Canadian authors. Oh, cool. Um, because I'm like, if I'm going to read in French, I don't want to read a translation. Like, there's enough people like, yeah, in the I French. Get that. Pe- yeah, I'm like, if it if it's a book in English, if it's translated from English, I'll read it in English. If it's I trans- honestly didn't go there. I thought you were mm-hmm. like, I want to read something that's like written by a Canadian with a Quebecois way of writing rather than like a Parisian way of writing. I didn't there's, even think about translations. There's that. There's that too. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I want to reconnect with like, because I don't consume a, like, a lot of like Quebecois culture. I'm going to be 100% honest. Like, that is something that I like, even English Canadian, like Canadian in general, I'm. Um, if it makes its way through the mix, but I don't seek it out. So I was like, maybe I should read, like, for reading. Mm-hmm. I should, because I know, like, we got a lot of, like, good books. Mm-hmm. Um, and just, like, for a good example of that, um, Life of Pi mm. by Yann Martel. Like, people don't know he's a Canadian author. Um, he's bilingual, but he writes in English. And, like, his best friend, I think, translates to French and really like adapts it so it's one of those rare authors and he kind of like because he speaks and reads and writes french he's perfectly bilingual he kind of he's the one who like edits he doesn't do the translation but he reads and edits the translation so those are actually pretty good to read in either languages i don't think it's yeah but uh yeah i just kind of like i picked up a book a, a series of short stories from an author I never heard of. I put the photo on Twitter and I got the books like three days ago, but I've been so busy the past three days that I kind of set them down and forgot what I got. But another one I got is from a actually a Japanese author who moved to Montreal in like the 80s. Oh, neat. So she makes collection of small stories too so i picked that up i don't know if she writes in japanese and gets translated or if she writes directly in french or she writes in english i was just like i had the marker as a local author and i was like that's good enough for me so i'll let you guys know how the reading journey goes but that's like i didn't play games instead i wasted way too much time on my phone and i felt bad about it so now i'm gonna go back to playing games i need to go back to assassin's creed mirage i probably forgot how to play the fucking game like that'll nah, come back it'll come back to you I'll, I'll have to check out the tutorial again and uh yeah when i've got dick in around time i've got recipe books and a sh- nice pretty like digestible small novels to try to get back into the habit because uh yeah, it's it's nice to look like for screaming huskies on Reddit and TikTok, but at some point I got to do something else. Speaking of screaming huskies, so, oh my god, oh my god, <laughs> okay, we started. <laughs> let's go on a little side tangent. Okay, we started uh, training lessons with Gibson. Mm-hmm. So we go on Saturdays. We had the first one this Saturday. It's for an hour. It's at PetSmart, and we're there with seven other dogs. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is great because it's like teaching them to socialize, but but they're not really getting the opportunity to socialize, but they're getting used to like being in a new environment and all that kind of stuff. So it's the beginner class. Gibson, I thought was going to be the biggest dog there. I think he still is by a touch. There's some, there were two, uh, the, the rest were all smaller dogs for the most part. Two of them were really too young to be there. I think they put them in the wrong class. They should have been in the puppy class because they Mm -hmm. were like under five months. Now, mind you, Gibson's 10 months pushing, I guess, 11 now. Um, But there was a husky, a three-year-old husky. And man, was he vocal. (laughs) He was just like, roar, roar, roar. Catherine, he had the most beautiful eyes. He had one that was brown and one that was like icy blue. Oh, I love it when they have heterochromia. Oh, oh my God. So pretty. He's so cute. <laughs> yeah. And like Gibson just wanted to play. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and this but guy yeah. screaming in the background just like. Rah! Yeah. 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 Totally. Uh, but yeah, it was exciting. So I here's the thing. I get to see that dog for the next five weeks. <laughs> As long as he sticks with it. Um, I think the husky, though, was three years old um, and doing the training now. I don't know if they had the dog from being a puppy or not. It could have been, like, a rescue or yeah. something like that. But uh, 
But yeah, they were interesting. But the the lady who's the instructor, she's great. Like, she's super animated and everything. And I couldn't get over how quickly they all picked it up, too. Even in an hour, I was like, holy smokes. Now, mind you, Gibson knows some stuff, yeah, yeah. right? But next week, next week starts the walking. And that's what I need the most. Because Gibson's like to pull. And oh. he's already really big. Yeah. <laughs> so um, he pulls me. <laughs> who's walking who here? The, the thing is, like, from what I remember from having dogs, is they're quick to learn, but they're mm-hmm. also quick to unlearn. It's like if you don't stick with it yourself mm-hmm. and encourage the behaviors you want and prevent the behaviors you don't want, it goes back to it. Like, for example, my dad always fed the dogs at the table, gave them table food. Mm-hmm. Um, I never fed dogs ever, ever, ever. So what they trained was... They would show up to the table, look at me, remember that I don't give them shit and go sit by my dad. <laughs> I mean, that works. At least they know he's always, they're always going to do what your dad, but. Yeah. But yeah. it's, and, and when we were over at Pascal's mom, she's got a one-year-old or barely one-year-old uh, like Labradoodle. Or yeah. And they were having issues. Like yeah. when they made food or when you ate, she would scream and yell because she wanted food. And I'm like. By the second day, she stopped yelling at me. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm dealing with that right now. Mostly because, like, he just wants to be vocal for being vocal because he knows yeah. that I'll, I'll look at him. But, uh, yeah. we'll get there. We'll get there. It's also, they're also in the phase, and I'm sure that dog is too, where it's like when they're like almost one, they're still, they're like teenager y, like, yeah. so they're yeah, like testing the, the waters, right? Or sometimes the brain just switch back to puppy mm. and somehow they just go ape shit, and you're like, yeah, the fuck happened? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the game that I was playing was Coral Island, still going, going nuts with that. I'm having so much fun with it. It is such a great game. I love the fact that I can jump back and forth in between my PC and my Xbox, going back and Mm -hmm. forth. That's great. Um, yeah, I just, I just keep going. Now I'm just, uh, looking for the next game to play. I have a game for review. I don't know if I'm allowed to say what it is yet. Uh, but there's lots of stuff coming already. And plus, I have such a backlog. I still have Persona 5 Tactica, mm-hmm. um, Dredge, uh, uh, Dave the Diver, Minico's Night Market. And Mike and I are already looking at, like, vacation planning. And then I'm always, I'm, I'm like, okay, well, what I should do is save a game for vacation, but not start it on vacation. I need to mm-hmm. start it before so that I'm hooked before I get on vacation. Yeah, Because yeah. I want to engage in a game while I'm on vacation. It doesn't happen. Yeah. I think that's what happened to me. It was like, yeah. in, even though I've been playing Mirage, mm. I was still like in the early stages of the game. And then I left for five days. And when I came back, I was like, yeah, yeah. And I, w- I was playing even like the times before because we couldn't really like stay at my sister's place because of the dog. Um, just because there's just too much going on and he would just be run everybody run ragged by him um and mike was working i did have a lot of downtime here at the house and while i was still doing stuff i'd play a lot of coral island in between laundry and cleaning and whatever else cat it's time for a new session of walk down memory card lane oh snap we're doing the calendar all over again we are. We're we're going again. I'm not gonna lie. It's hard to find something for the beginning of January. Same problem I had for the end of December. <laughs> yeah. For the one that uh, for my birthday, as you were doing uh, everybody's yeah. birthdays, and I just yeah. show up January seventh. Like good luck. Good luck. Yeah, but I've got one for today. Okay. So. Uh, if you're new here, each week the team will have, or just cat, <laughs> will have to guess a historical game that would have released during the time of this episode's airing. We'll start with a release date, and then I'll give hints about the game, uh, and cat will attempt to guess what that is. Let me get me a document open. Okay, so Catherine, this is how I was able to shoehorn this in. This game released in early access on January 14th of 2016. Early access. Yeah. We're really taking a curveball here. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Early access. All right, I'll take the next hint, please. Okie dokie. It later released on August 1st, 2017 on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and Xbox One. Mac. <laughs> and that's a long ass... It's a weird bunch to launch on, but it makes sense. 
Xbox One. It's a long. It's yeah. So it actually released it officially on August first of twenty seventeen, but they did the early access thing. That's how I yeah made it. It fit. was <laughs> Xbox One was the console it released on. Yeah, like the old one, not the. Mm-hmm. I hit my mic again. Um, damn, PC game. Is it a Halo? No. No, Halo's not a Mac. What the fuck am I talking about? And I don't think that's ever gone in early access. Yeah. You want another clue? I feel like Mac and Linux like would be like po- possibly a Blizzard game. But yeah, I'll take the other clue. It is an open world first person life sim adventure game. First person life sim adventure game. <laughs> Is it Stardew Valley? Nope. That's not first person. You're right. It's isometric. You're right. I got. Oh my god! Someone should do that. Someone should make a (laughs) pixel game. Well, I guess it's kind of been done. What was that game? There was a a farming sim game that was kind of like that. I guess it's Minecraft. Who am I kidding? Yeah, (laughs) that is Minecraft. Okay. And this game is not Minecraft. No, what I'm guessing. it is okay. not Minecraft. Um, a life sim, first person life sim. The only life sims. Yeah, first person like. Did you want another clue? Yeah. You play as Beatrix LeBeau, a rancher who moves to a planet far from Earth called the Far, Far Range. I I think I've never heard of this game. Oh, my God. Um, No, you've heard of it. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know if you've played it. Is it one of those, um, what are they called? What? Is it one of the what? moon something harvest moon no no it's not harvest moon you want another clue yes please you collect raise feed and breed creatures in this game oh is it slime rancher yes ma'am oh (laughs) shit The rest of the clues that I had is your main tool slash weapon slash piece of gear in the game is called a vac pack. You make money from selling the creature's poop. <laughs> right. I would have gotten that one. Exactly. When you breed the creatures, you get giant hybrids. The bad creatures are called Largos. There's currently a sequel in development. Also, we're in early access. Um, and it has a feature film in development. Slime Rancher. Early They're access, a- January 14th. They're making a Slime Rancher movie? So the internet says. They okay. S- someone has the rights to it. Wow, okay, yeah. See, I didn't play Slime Rancher, so I didn't realize it was first person. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't oh, think wow. I've seen a lot of gameplay for Slime Rancher. Oh, it's such a good game. Highly recommended. Highly recommended. All right. Uh, Topic of the week is our year in review of 2023. Catherine, takes a quick break and come back? Yep. Cool. All right. It's time to get into the year in review in video games. The year is 2023. It just happened. We just concluded it. And uh, yeah, we can now look back at it and say, good, bad, ugly. Let's talk it all through. Catherine, let's jump into first the biggest news stories of 2023 in video games. What's top of your list? Uh, Let's just get it out of the way. Everything Mm -hmm. Activision Blizzard. Mm, Like the lawsuits. Mm -hmm. The ongoing lawsuits and everything. Um, Microsoft, the whole acquisition. I think it took the entire year. Yeah. Um, by the way, like two years almost because, like, yeah. wasn't it announced? And, like, because I was looking back at the 2022 document and the announcement was in that, and I was like, wow, yeah. it was two years for this to and come. And I remember the announcement shocked us because they were like in the thick of getting sued by like 
the government of California and like yeah. other fed like other entities in the United States. So mm-hmm. and, and Microsoft was like, mm, love me a good toxic relationship, I guess. <laughs> Let's um, clean this mess up. They said anyway. It finished that the lawsuits are not done. No, and the companies are not fixed. But it finished that Microsoft actually purchased, and Bobby Kotick is officially out. He got his two giant bags, brown sacks with the dollar signs on it, <laughs> and he's going to live off whatever m- trillions he made while he sank the ship that is a almost sank the ship that is Activision Blizzard. And fucked off. Yeah, I hope he gets personally sued for some know. of the shit he did there. I now that he's not working there anymore and he's not protected, I hope they sue the fuck out of him. Um, but yeah, that's like two years. All we've been talking about is fucking Activision Blizzard. Mm-hmm. Now we're gonna start talking about what, when is everything coming? When are things coming to Game Pass? How is Xbox going to mitigate? You know all the things they said they were gonna do, like mm-hmm. making sure that COD stays in all the places it was being played. Um, Yeah. It's kind of wild. I mean, it feels like it was yesterday that we heard about it, but like it was so long ago that it's like, yeah, Uh, these uh, things take so long to play uh, out. Yeah. I feel we checked in on this acquisition like once a month. Easy. Oh yeah, for sure. It's been an ongoing topic piece. And like, I cannot wait for the book about this kind of walking you through the entire you know thing because you're documenting and it could turn into a movie (laughs) oh put make a documentary put that shit on netflix i am down yeah like we need to relive that and get the tea get the dirty laundry like air out the dirty laundry like dig in the closets let's do this (laughs) please yeah uh I think on my end, one of the things that was probably the biggest news story of 2023, and mostly it wasn't necessarily something that surprised us. It was like just a long time coming, was the end of an era officially with the announcement in the end of December that E3 is no more. Officially dead. Officially canceled. Yeah. Yeah. It is no longer a thing. Um, We saw this writing on the wall for quite a while. Uh, Everybody, I guess, was kind of hoping that something would come, you know, come together and fix it and whatever. I mean, we kind of have a replacement in what uh, Jeff Neely's doing with Summer Game Fest. But at the same time, I feel like things are really fractured Mm -hmm. because there's so many different events. But at the same time, I feel like there's... You will go, you will pay attention to the events that you think matter to you based on your tastes. Now, I, I yeah, I only paid attention to the conferences anyway, and then mm-hmm. everything else I didn't. Yeah, give a crap. Yeah, though it it sucks to not have that opportunity to go and see people right in the yeah. industry, right? The, but the bi- there's going to be other opportunities for yeah, that. Yeah, the big right? thing about E3 was like to go on site and try games and play games, especially for unreleased hardware. Yeah. Um, that was the big thing. But with, like, Xbox and the like doing their own outside of E3 events mm-hmm. and doing their own, like, on-invite things, like, for people to see the new consoles and Sony just not showing up. Um, because I think for actual games, like, putting demos out is way better, like, online to just yeah. do that. And to have demos ready, like downloadable demos for the press, because then after that, you're just stuck with whomever is there and whomever gets to go to E3 is privileged. Like it's, you have to, and it's like, there's, I don't know how long the list is of countries that have banned people or like seriously limit people from entering the United States. Um, The United States has a, like a lot of people of, of those countries, mostly where people are not white. So you have that on top of the fact that it's California, it's expensive, it's blah, 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 blah. So yeah, I think in there terms of just like, yeah. yeah, there's so many roadblocks. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm, I'm hoping that like 
Gamescom and Tokyo Game Fest and like those events. And, you know, you have mm-hmm. GDC, which is an event only. It's for the industry. But like, mm-hmm. you know, the smaller contain events to keep going and for people to turn more to online for things like demos and reaching out to press and sending press games and things like that. I think yeah. it's the physical event has probably less of an impact nowadays other than for the industry but then again we can go to industry smaller industry events or the big the big three are making their own like private events yeah smaller like events doing one and you know and doing them in multiple areas of the world you know Mm -hmm. so it's it's sad but at the same time i'm like you guys were so out of touch and did nothing to save Mm. to save your events yeah and I think it would have happened over time. It's just that the pandemic fast tracked absolutely everything. Oh yeah, definitely. the The pandemic really highlighted a lot of issues in general in the world, and the world has completely changed. Um, mm-hmm. And it left behind a lot of things, and that unfortunately includes E three. Yeah. Uh, what's another one? For you, biggest news stories of 2023. Um, uh, man, um, fucking video game franchises killing it as non-video games. Yeah, something that's uh, kind of like, happy, you know? Like the Mario, <laughs> the Mario movie yeah. is not a meme like the Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter movies. Like, or the old Mario movie. That shit. <laughs> Like, these are examples of stuff that's so bad that it circles back to being good, to becoming a yeah. cult classic just because it's terrible. No, the Mario movie is actually good. Minus Chris Pratt. Fuck that guy. Um, <laughs> but, like, the Mario movie actually being good. The Last of Us HBO Ugh. show being, like, did it sh- break records yeah. in terms of viewership? and? Yeah, it did very well. And, of course, it won that award um yeah. i don't know if it won anything at the emmys last night i didn't hear anything about it or the golden yeah, globes and... or there was a golden globes that was last night yeah, it was golden globes that were last night Nothing some some me. uh that guy that the one of the calkin brother not mccall that mccauley yeah other one, uh that the played... other one he won for in secession yeah yeah and he won over pedro pascal so oh was that it uh okay but i don't know oh, if it was pedro life. pascal for last of us or pedro pascal for mandalorian oh man. uh, anyway it is it is the the era of pedro pascal and we're all here for it exactly um but <laughs> it was always nice like it was always awkward to have these conversations with people who don't play games Mm-hmm. Just kind of like TV being their main like form of entertainment, being like, when this happened, I don't wonder what's going to happen next. And I'm just like, I've known what's going to happen since 2013. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like, true. But it's nice to see that they're actually, yeah, taking a story that did so well and is beloved by so many people in the game industry, and actually give it what it deserves and what they did have to add because obviously a video game is different from a tv show um and what they added to it really worked Uh, and honestly like like i did i did well to not spoil the people i was talking to mm -hmm. and i told them like don't google the thing because like a video the game's been out for 10 years like yeah the spoilers are out there you can have them and at this yeah. point, they're fair game because the game's been out again for 10 years. Uh, but I like that it was like living 2013, 2014 again when they got to the ending of the series. Yeah. With like uh, Ellie and whatever. And people were like, like <laughs> the dude did what? I was like, oh, there we go. We're just wait. Psych- like, you know how we always re- history repeats itself. Like we had mm-hmm. a new group of people seeing this ending and being like, what the fuck? Like, oh, yeah. join us, please. Join us. join us. And now you can play the remastered version very soon of The Last of Us Part 2 and join us for whenever we get that series because now we're back from the writer's strike. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and strike. by the way, um, no spoilers, but um, the next season of The Last of Us is not going to be easier. <laughs> no. Just it's say, be, like, it's, it's the kind of game that, like, and the kind of story that just keeps coming and coming and coming for your feels. Yeah. Um, that's why we like it. And that's why it's, like, it make, I think that's why it makes such a good show as well. Yeah. 
Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, we also saw a slew of services shutting down, which yep. we're in that era now where like, it's no longer physical media. It's now services and you know, you got to grab things while you can because things, you know, servers and whatever else. Um, what we thought was going to happen eventually did happen. Google studio shut down. Uh, it was just came across like it came quicker than what we expected. Well, uh, I was giving it another year, but they were giving like, it another year. I was, I was like, this shit's not going past like 2024. It's uh, funny because Google studio, you know, like came out at the get go as promising, 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 but under delivered severely. Now Xbox and game pass and cloud street X, uh, X cloud and all that jazz. Um, that, I would say xCloud alone is like a slow burn, but I feel like they're doing the right things um, Mm -hmm. and taking it in stride and, you know, learning, testing, adjusting. While Google Stadia said, we're going to be as good as the greatest video game consoles, but streaming that you've ever seen. And And they went went towards like game studios to be like, put your game on our thing, but you need to make a Stadia version. Like you can't just put the game on the Stadia. No. Like, every game that was on Stadia had a Stadia version. Of course. So they had very special needs to well, be able to work in streaming. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, you know, having a game on multiple platforms. Like, the actual content yeah, no, was the it's same. Just the, it's the finicky the rapper, stuff. The yeah. rapper, yeah. Yeah. And then also stuff that, you know, just comes to pass, you know, as, yeah. you know, new consoles go, come, old consoles have to go. Um the 3DS and Wii U online store is also shut down. Um, so, yeah, I mean, but w- everybody kind of anticipated that. But I remember the story of everybody just, like, going and trying to grab versions of Pokemon and stuff like that for Pokemon that are actually stuck to certain consoles because you can't play them. They haven't been put into any of the newer games and things like mm-hmm. that yet. So I remember that being in the uh, video game ecosystem speak you know yeah for a few weeks of everybody just kind of wrestling around with that yeah. idea but that's part of it right like didn't they want to close the sony wanted to close the vita store but they had to backtrack as well because um archiving issues something like that but yeah. not sure but hey the way that nintendo operates they'll just repackage it and sell it to you again for the umpteenth time. <laughs> uh, I mean, at least for, like, the big hitters, like, the big games, like, the Pokemons of this world and the Marios of this world, you can still get cartridges or yeah. CDs. Like, they're yeah. still big on physical media, uh, so you can buy, like, secondhand cartridges. But at this point, like, even the... Everybody's gonna be like, physical media superiority. Yes, but they're, like, fucking expensive, because now they close the store, so they are driving the price of these cartridges. Like up mm-hmm. the wazoo and that just means it's less again accessibility out Excellent. the fucking window yeah yeah uh got another one cat before we move on to our next category yeah finish the year with grand theft auto 6 yeah thank goodness just showed leaked. up leaked leaked like 12 hours before it was the launch <laughs> i mean somebody hacked and leaked the entire game but it was like a pre-alpha build so it's like anybody that works in video game was like yeah that means nothing dude like by the time yeah, the game no comes but i mean out, the trailer but yeah but then after that they announced they were going to do a trailer and somebody hacked to leak the trailer it's just like this game cannot catch a break um and but seriously like that was one of the most impressive trailers i've seen in a long time yeah i i I've played enough Grand Theft Auto. I'm not, like, super, super in-depth in it. Like, I played through the story and things like that of the last one and things. But, like, this actually, like, got me. Like, I don't know if it's the setting. I don't know if it's the concept of the protagonist. I don't know if it's because of how they're mixing in, like, the social media stuff or what. But, like, I'm, I'm very excited. But I want to, like hold on to that and rein it in a bit because it was the same way with cyberpunk so yeah. i don't want to get burned yeah but like cyberpunk they're they're like no man's guy right they eventually got they, there they, they eventually 
got there. They just but have to play the, the game and, but two the years Witcher later. Was, Witcher was good, and then they promised this. And I mean, Grand Theft Auto Five is good, and now they're promising this. But I mean, like, I feel like Rockstar knows what they're at, and they'll delay something if they feel like they need to delay something. Yeah, I, I think they'll make sure that the game is good and stable before they throw in like GTA GTA Six online. I know people will yeah. be screaming and cram- clamoring, or they'll release like just PC so that they can have GTA Online at launch. That that's yeah. the way I I'm figuring it out. Or mm. because like Rockstar, it's always been that their MO that they launch platforms one by one. They never yeah. do a multi platform launch. So yeah. Yeah, it it could save them. Yeah, but it it ends up waiting. You know, Cyberpunk was shitty at launch, so you had to wait until they fixed it until your version was good. Um, Rockstar games they're good on launch, but you got to wait till it hits your platform. <laughs> so yeah. it ends up to waiting, waiting, waiting to have a good Patience. game. Patience. That's the that's the name of the game. Yeah. Um, we'd be remiss if we didn't. Uh, say this is one of the biggest news stories of 2023 before we move on to the next one. Though it does kind of fit into the next one uh, yeah. as we're going to go to talk about disappointments. Fabulous year for games, shit year for the industry. Amongst record profits, we're also getting record layoffs and studio closures and things like that. I actually put that like in the overarching trend of 2023. I mean, yes, it's, it's, it's definitely going to be part of it. If that's the like you want to know what's the trend in the industry like we're working hard we're making profits we're making money the industry's never been more profitable but our jobs are the least secure they've ever been yeah which is wild because i feel like when we started covid and like it was like that was everybody was like make games for people to play and do all this stuff and they were hiring and hiring and hiring and now it's the complete opposite it's like the, yeah the tables have turned um but We've had some of the greatest games come out this year with fantastic reviews, um, which we will get into in a bit, too. Uh, Because, yeah, there's definitely some of the biggest surprises have been some of the greatest games coming out this year. Let's get into biggest disappointments of the year. Uh, Cat, top of mind? What the fuck was Twitch doing? (laughs) I don't know. Serious question. Like, know. I'm asking the audience. Like, they came out with, like, know. new uh, new ads Can or we, new what? format for ads. And it weren't, they weren't sharing. And then they backtracked on that. And then they, like, reviewed, like, the, the con- like how they shared the revenue with the content creators. And they went back on that. And then they said, like, and then they were tighter on certain restrictions. I don't know. Like, ev- they, they came out. Every time they came out with something new, like, two weeks later, they were like... Psych. Well, I mean, it's just like Unity. Yeah. Unity came out and said, talk about another disappointment being like, we're going to change how you monetize this and how you pay for Unity using Unity and uh, make it really hard. Oh, yeah, and it's retroactive. So people who already have games out, uh, too bad, so sad. And you're just like, what? Who thought this was a good idea? And now how do you trust to go develop on a, on a software like that and use yeah. that as your engine? And I, I, I hope... And I feel like I hope that like, you know, like big studios that like produce on Unity, because mm-hmm. um, like, you know, like we have Rainbow Six uh, Mobile mm-hmm. that had a limited uh, soft launch mm-hmm. that's on Unity. I hope like that a lot of like the big studios turn around to Unity and being like, what in the capitalist cash grab? Like we're all greedy here. Mm-hmm. We're, we're all, all doing greedy, it for the cash, yeah. But like, we're so greedy that we'll we'll do something else. We'll turn to Unreal or whatever. Um, I think that's what happens. It's just so many of their clients. What? What the actual fuck, my guy? Mm-hmm. Like, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, the likes of big studios that have like good legal teams be like, um, we have a contract, and you're breaching our contract by doing this, so you can't do this. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if like they tried it and legally they just couldn't do it. It was the big guys that just showed up with their big lawyers being like, eh, 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 I don't fucking think so, guy. <laughs> anyway. Speculations, but uh, I think they realized that by trying to make more money, they were making a shit ton less by pissing mm-hmm. off everybody that uses their product. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's what Twitch tried to do. They were trying to get more greedy and people were like, they, what if yeah. we just stop using your platform? Yeah. 
and it's like, oh, you have nowhere else to go. I'm like, they don't have to do this. Then go like, YouTube. if if it doesn't become a livelihood for streamers anymore, and YouTube can't fill that gap, they're just gonna What's get jobs, my kick? guy. Kick. I don't know. I don't watch a lot of streaming. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, I kind of felt. That's the thing too. Is I feel like I fell out of watching live streaming i watch a lot of video online video game content but it's on demand afterwards and i'm i'm particular yeah. about who but i don't have the flexibility in my life to just jump on when someone's streaming i try to catch anytime i can catch steve i'll jump on and watch him but besides that i you know it's just not an option especially in the job that i do i can't just put that on in the background i have a hard time just listening to music in the background of what i do because often i'm in the middle of meetings or something or i need to really focus and yeah. can't because i can't pay attention to that but like in the evenings like falling asleep to minecraft and life sim and sim management games yeah, yeah. is kind of what i do so uh so yeah that's my opportunity and usually there are people aren't streaming at that time plus i want to follow the progress which i can't do and as yeah, going. yeah. I, I think YouTube's more your format. I saw a few like uh, people posting their highlights and whatever on TikTok. Um, mm-hmm. There's like this. There's this grandma and this grandpa. They're not a couple or anything, but there's like this grandma. I think she's called Tactical Grandma, who just headshots everybody. Huh? And um, there's the grandpa, who's I think he's called Gaming Grandpa or something like that. He's a retired Army vet mm-hmm. or Navy. I forget. Um, um, but he snipes people from so far away that sometimes like on his little highlight reel, like on, on TikTok, I don't see the person. He just shoots. And then I see the, the little icon to say he like got the a kill. Death count. And I go in the comments and the comments are just like, who, like, where was there a player? Like, I didn't even see who he shot. Like, I'm just like, okay, this is the, basically this is. And sometimes when I scroll through TikTok again, I will stop. I promise. Uh, I will get to reading. But sometimes you get people that also stream live their gaming on TikTok. Yes, yes. More and more. So, I mean, Twitch better watch out. I know TikTok's probably, I think their monetization is all over the place and we don't have it in Canada. But it's it means that in like markets like the United States, people are finding alternative to Twitch yeah. every time they try to pull something stupid. Very true. Um, one of my biggest disappointments of the year is a very me problem, um, yeah. was Redfall yeah. because I really wanted a vampire game to work. And I feel like this poor game just kind of got stuck in transition hell. Yeah. With the acquisition of <laughs> yeah, Bethesda. Bethesda acquisition. Cause that's the other one. And that happened like the year or closed a year or two before. Um, yeah, I was really sad about Redfall. I... Wanted it to work. I thought the idea, like, we've had so many zombie games. I love vampires. Most of my audiobooks is re- listening to fantasy spot. <laughs> and a lot of times there's vampires involved and stuff like that. Um, and, yeah, we don't get it very often. I'm very excited for Blade when that yeah. comes. Yeah, um, I think. That's going to be fun. I but think yeah, that's going to scratch that itch, that Redfall. Yeah, but. Couldn't. I wish. I wish. I wish. What could have been, I really don't think, unlike other games where they've kind of risen from the ashes, I don't think Redfall's going to rise from the grave. I think... I think that one's buried. Yeah, I think that's been staked. Dead and buried. Um, yeah. Let's get into surprises, Cat. Oh, fucking Baldur's Gate 3, let's go! Who would have thunk, right? I'm not, I'm not surprised that it was a good game. I knew I was going to love it. It's just I was surprised that all of y'all love it, like everybody. That's the point. That's the point. I feel like, and I've said it so many times, it was the perfect storm for that game to release. Mm-hmm. The yeah. absolute perfect storm. Enough people had gotten into games. Enough people have started to get into Dungeons and Dragons through mm-hmm. other medium, like Stranger Things and stuff like that, and have become curious. It's no longer the geeky thing it once was, right? Yeah. So many fem- famous people are like doing like their Dungeons and Dragons streams and whatever else, right? Yeah. So, and it's plus, like it's just a good game. It's a it's, fantastic game. So. They showed up on the internet and were like, you see all these, like, the the emo priestess, the vamp- vampire rogue, uh, the big burly elf that turns into a bear, the mm-hmm. fire lady with the horns. Uh, you can fuck them all. 
<laughs> and yep. the internet was like, bet. Bet. Um, <laughs> to the point where it's getting blocked in some places now. Yeah, you see those stories where people were getting like their their Xbox accounts flagged and stuff like that because they were putting up sex scenes and things like that yeah. into their into their, you know, saved uh data or their saved captures and stuff and yeah. uh, sharing it and it was like eh, eh, not but, safe for work but yeah it was definitely the perfect storm but also like in a world where the other like open world rpg that released was a uh, legend of zelda mm-hmm. which does not scratch the narrative itch it scratches the exploration itch so i feel like yeah. people that wanted a good story automatically just kind of like latched onto Baldur's Gate 3 because they were like looking at Zelda. It was like, it's nice to have like the little the little guy like build his little things and those little contraptions, but like what's my motivation? And Laren mm. Studios were like, y'all want to date Asterian? And people were like, yes, please. The thing is too, is that we had, we knew Zelda was going to be good. Yeah. The expectations it's not, are, and it is, it's not a surprise. This was an actual surprise that this yeah. came out and was banger. Like my brother messaged me the other day and was like, uh, Baldur's Gate three, should I play it? And I was like, I haven't touched it because I'm don't know that like I've never D and D or anything, so I feel like a lot would be lost on me, but I know the folks that have played it love it. So I mean, even if you don't know D and D, like if you love a good like fantasy game, mm. play it. Play it. Like yeah. I mean, you can you can play it on easy and sort of like to go the automatic way, like do the all levels and whatnot. Yeah, kind of like you can coast through it, yeah. like doing that, or you can like look into a few intro videos, but or you can go like crazy and min max and shit like that. But I'm like, I, I might play. do what I might do what I usually do: and start watching someone play it on YouTube, and then be like, "Yeah, I want to play this." Yeah, <laughs> there's also that option, like for anybody that can't be arsed. Yeah. Like, is looking at this system and be like, this is too complex, I can't be ours. Find a good playthrough, and people will probably note who they're romancing, and then you can see all the story arcs, like, all the romance. A lot of people, that's all they do is just play the game and do all the story arcs. Mm. And then just put all that shit in YouTube, and you can watch all of it, and you don't have to play it yourself. Uh, because I, I had friends growing up that what they like to do was know the story of Final Fantasy, but not play Final Fantasy. I played Final Fantasy. So I had a lot of like people just like sitting on the couch being like, yeah, watching me play for the story. Mm-hmm. I watched like, that was one thing when I was trying to figure out the builds and stuff for Diablo. Yeah. Is I'd watch a lot and see how to build the right character too. Cause there were so many different options that you could respect and all that kind of stuff. But I was like, no, I want to do this. How do I get there? So maybe that's what I have to do and say like, this is the mi- mission I need to go on. Or like, these are the, the yeah. statistics I need to pick and then kind of run with it from there and play it out. Yeah. Be like D and D is a lot of like, yeah, you can be like, I want this class that's going to do this and be very mechanical, but you can also go through vibes. Like I want to be like this, uh, emo chick that goes by like the magic of the moon i'm like all right i got you could be a druid or you could be a cleric because cleric a lot of situation you could be a cleric it's just like yeah we can easily do like a cleric or a druid build that goes like Hmm. with moon magic or like the moon goddesses and you can cast spells and be a witch like i can make you a moon witch easy like you can go or you can be like i just want somebody that screams and that runs through it i'm like cool barbarian let's talk about it you know <laughs> well here's the thing too is that because everybody's played it and made all this content now i just wait for a sale pick it up and play it at my leisure yeah and now it's like it's good is it out on xbox now yeah so that was the other thing too and i guess that surprise that we didn't have on here which is still tied to Baldur's Gate 3 is it won a game of the year and then it dropped that night on xbox but they didn't tell anybody they're just like boop it's here because it <laughs> didn't come out on xbox to start so yeah that 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 was a surprise good segue cat <laughs> um this one is more of a lull than anything else uh because it's just kind of funny we're talking about services shutting down and all this kind of stuff and how like things have changed you know pandemic really kind of shook the snow globe that is the video game industry um we are not really talking about nfts anymore that e. used to be the hot button topic of everything everybody why. and their cat had an nft and now there's like no talk about it except for people having to pay people back because they scammed 
I, it's like it was a pirate scam, like an MLM from the get-go. Like, yeah. Ugh. Yeah, I, I just had to add that one in there because that was funny. I'm happy it's uh, dead and gone. Yeah, and that I've I've recruiters have stopped poking me and to emailing work on us NFT games and emailing us to be like, you wanna promote our NFT thing? And I'm like, no, no, we don't. <laughs> no, no, we don't. We don't. Um, but all seriousness, uh, one that did surprise me, but I mean, like, this was going to happen at some point, uh, Charles Martinet retired from voicing Mario, mm-hmm. which came with him, obviously, he voiced a character in Super Mario Brothers movie, um, but we did get our first Super Mario game, Super Mario Wonder, without him as voicing Mario, which, you know, that's an end of an era, because he was there from the beginning. Yeah. From the first time Mario spoke on the Nintendo 64. Mm Mm-hmm. Very true. Uh, So, with all that kind of summering together, Kat, uh, trends. Trends of 2023. Yeah, I've got two um, that I put in the doc. Like, one, the layoffs and the studio closures. Mm -hmm. Um, It went all the way just before Christmas, people losing their jobs, uh, studio Mm -hmm. closing and things like that. It's... Honestly, it's very sad because, like, some some of these closures, like, Investor dried up. Like, Embracer fucked up. Um, they were promised, yeah, there's, but... There's poor business decisions. Yeah. Um, and then there's, yeah. you know, the Microsofts of this world and, you know, everything they own, including Bethesda and Activision Blizzard, who also had layoffs in their gaming divisions um Mm -hmm. even though they were doing record profits and everything i think it's just like people smell the recession some of the people laid off because of the recession and unfortunately it made for a very bleak and gloomy uh industry and uh, speaking with some friends um a lot of them just left the industry to go in more stable employment and realized and remembered that when you don't work in game you can actually make some actual money and have benefits um work-life balance too you know work-life balance you're not trying to ship a game i mean we'll have our moments in our industry yeah. where there are some pressure points where you got to get stuff done there's events there's things happening but yeah it's not nearly as chaotic right exactly so i i think like i hope the trends for 2024 for gaming will be a certain of business maturity and And that comes with, like, your office culture, like, all the allegations that have been coming out since 2020, like, get that shit in order. Get actual DEI. Actually shut up, shut the people that say, like, oh, if you're hiring, like, if you're hiring, like, uh, a woman or a queer person or a person of color instead of, like, a white guy, that's discrimination. No, you cannot discriminate against a person that is in the position of privilege. We're only bringing people up to your level. We're not bringing you down. We're not punching down. Shut up. Um, like, and companies actually looking into business and long term plans so that they don't show up like two quarters later. Like, where's the money? Like, mm-hmm. you have run the business like a fucking business mm-hmm. and care more about the people that make your game mm-hmm. than the fucking investors that throw money at you because then you turn around and you're like, all oh, my games are shitty. Well, yeah, because you keep firing the people that make them and make them fun. Um, we've seen like, you know, ebbs, it ebbs and flows, but we've seen like that, like, you know, at one point the music industry, when streaming came in, started to, you know, rip apart the seams and I, yeah. I think it, 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 it made like, it took a hit on the quality or if some artists held back on releasing their songs and their content waiting, like to find out what would happen. And it's, um, or with AI, because of that, mm-hmm. we had writer strikes to protect them from losing their job from AI to AI and things like that. It's, uh, I think it's just gonna, it's gonna keep going. But I hope like that, the gaming industry matures and runs a business like you're with more foresight, because not every industry ends up like stuck. Like anyway. Uh, hoping that for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Things to even out a bit. Um, 
Because, yeah, in order to put out these fantabulous games that we've been playing this year, Zelda, Baldur's Gate, Spider-Man, uh, geez, Diablo, like, there's been there's been so many. And even the small games, like, you know, uh, Sea of Stars and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. We need to make sure that they're, in order for these creatives to be creative, they need to be comfortable, too, right? And be safe. Yeah. And yeah. know that there's a paycheck, so... And they unlike can do the what other, they need to do. yeah, and unlike the other entertainment industries, like the video game industry is not unionized. No, so, like no. when the when there was the writer strike, that did not affect games because they're just they're game devs like everybody else. Yeah, it affected the production of Last of Us TV show, but yeah. not whatever Naughty Dog is doing now. More exactly, games. exactly. Um, and it can like if actors go on strike, it can affect games because actors are unionized. But yeah. Actual people that do the motion capture or not. So, mm-hmm. yeah, the over other overarching trend um, that I think is playing across that we're actually starting to feel the benefit of now mm-hmm. um, and also ramifications based on what we talked about earlier with some of the stuff closing is uh, cross play, cloud gaming, streaming, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Um, it's now ubiquitous. Like, I, I put it in there as a trend, not as in like it's new, as it's just. Now it's ubiquitous. It's it just second is. nature now yeah. for me to be able to float between cross play on two devices, for me to be able to pull up my iPad and be able to stream from xCloud to, yeah. you know, do all those kinds of things that, you know, we thought were a bit of a pipe dream before. But hey, I mean, that's that's the way technology goes. Um, it also means that people have misstepped, but everybody has kind of learned from it of what to do and what not to do. I mean, the same... The same thing can be said for the the previous topic, but uh, but yeah, it, it feels more real than it ever has before. Yeah. And now PlayStation really like revamped their whole like offering also, and they're like into mm-hmm. uh, cloud gaming, like streaming and whatnot uh, through their whatever. Is it still PS Plus? It's called. Mm, I don't remember it off the top anyway. of my head. I know they changed the name. I'm pretty sure it's plus. Anyway, as we were chatting, like before we actually started recording, because I, I canceled my Prime subscription because they're putting ads on Prime Video, and it was the only, the last Amazon service I was using. Um, now we have to check for our subscriptions in gaming because now there's like a bunch of them, like for access to game, for streaming games, for. And, yeah. and and now you used to be like, oh, which console do I get? Like, it's like, which console are your other friends playing so you can play with them? Now it's like with crossplay, it's like, who gives a shit? Yeah. It's That's like, what Mike's oh, out there doing p- there now. Yeah. I want to play Call of Duty with my friends. Okay. Which console do I get? Yes. Jump on a Discord chat so we're all in the same chat. It's you like, know? yeah. I want to play Fall Guys or whatever or Fortnite. Yeah. Yeah. What you do I get? Your phone. A thing. I'll play, I play on my Fortnite. Switch. <laughs> Someone else plays plays on their PC. Someone else plays on their Xbox. Yeah, it, it's yeah. it's just part of it now. It just now is. it's it, it it's, is it's ubiquitous and everybody's getting in on it and being serious about it. It's not just like Game Pass and EA Play being like, yeah, we're the pioneers. Now it's just like that's how you game now. And mm-hmm. I think like because. Every time we talked about it, we had, like, stars in our eyes. It's going to be like that. Like, my trend of 2023 is, like, it became the norm. And Mm. quietly. It just kind of, like... Yeah. And when I was looking at, like, my gaming habits, how they've completely changed over the past, like, year has a lot to do. A lot to do with crossplay and cloud gaming. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's dumb, but... Like, when we play For Honor, like, at work, if we're playing, like, the live build for, like, a tournament or whatnot, or just, like, casual play sessions to help people learn the game, Mm -hmm. if I'm at home, I'm playing on Xbox. On my Xbox. Like, it's... It's ubiquitous now. Mm -hmm. It's something that we did... Like, my first project when joining For Honor was working on cross-play. Cross-platform play. And they launched it in... Oh, I forget when we launched it, but I feel it was in 2022 or early 2023 on a seven-year-old game. And R6 did the same. They launched crossplay also. Rainbow mm-hmm. Six, like just these 
it's so ubiquitous that old games are like we got to do it too like well it's crazy to think that we lived a life where that was a pipe dream yeah right and i mean it's the same for a lot of the things that we're seeing here you know like some of the stuff we've talked about like seeing services launch and then die charles martinet retiring um talking about dungeon dragons which was so niche now being Mm -hmm. turned into one of the biggest video games of the year like it's it's kind of wild that you know we're seeing that and there there's gonna be a time where like kids never ever knew any different you know it's like before the internet we didn't have internet and cell yeah. phones and all this yeah. stuff and oh I, my god i waited for my dad like outside during 30 minutes and a snort why didn't you call him i didn't have a phone he didn't have yeah. a phone like it's just like there was a snort on he was late i had to wait and if yeah. i moved he wouldn't find me so you gotta stay like and you and read that- a book <laughs> yeah and it's like that sounds like ages ago but we're talking like 20 years or yeah. 25 yeah. even like, like for- look at like where we were when we started this podcast and like yeah can you think think it'd be like a service like game pass where like halo would come day and date to it Red they would Fall still would come mail day us. and day to us. They would mail us physical copies. I yeah. don't get physical copies anymore. I get a code. <laughs> when they started sending us codes, I was like, oh, oh, you well, should we, do that. Well, should- when we had to hand deliver the copy, the physical copy of the game to one of our team members to review, we had to make time to touch base and give them the game. And I remember sometimes us, like, them sending us a copy and us having to mail shit back sometimes. Oh, yeah. Like, for PlayStation hardware. VR. That's how yeah. I tested the PlayStation VR. I had to send it back. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's it, it's going to be interesting to see. I, this year is pretty much just going to be an evolution on that unless something else crazy happens. But, I mean, we're only in day eight. Yeah. <laughs> so we shall see. And with that uh, concludes this episode of the Girls on Games podcast. Um, we don't really have any stories to link to. <laughs> no, but I'll put some timestamps in there because it's a bit of a long one. Well, I mean, yeah, and it's good for SEO. Yeah. Um, if you enjoyed this show and you want to tell us that you did or that you did not, uh, you can rate and review this podcast if you have the power to do so on your podcasting platform of choice that allows it. Um, it does help with discovery, moves us up in the rankings, and uh, it helps with you know building our show and stuff like that. So much appreciated if you can do that. You can also leave comments in Discord. We have a podcast channel. You can mm-hmm. come yell at us there. Uh, thank you, Kat, for being on the show with me here today in this uh, two lady extravaganza. Uh, what's your social media? How can people reach out? Yeah, um, I'm there, but I'm not there. I'm trying not to be there. But you can find me on X uh, Instagram. I'm CSDSBINS. I'm on Thread and Blue Sky, but I'm not using them as much. Uh, I am not on TikTok. That's for scrolling only, but yeah, uh, honestly, but we're working on getting there for GOG, yeah. so you can message us there. <laughs> yeah, go follow GOG TikTok. Leave me alone. Um, <laughs> but honestly, if you want to reach out to me, uh, I'll be in the Book Nerds channel of the Ooh. Girls on Games Discord to talk about Love my that. little reading journey. So, uh, but I'm always shit posting in the Girls on Games Discord. Honestly. Perfect. I am Leah Jewer on social media platforms, but of course you want to know everything there's to know about Girls on Games. You can track us down at The Girls on Games on X and Facebook. Just Girls on Games, no the on there on Instagram and threads. Discord.me slash Girls on Games to continue this lovely convo and more. Um, yeah, we haven't really kicked off our TikTok yet. I'm still trying to build a strategy around that, so uh, we'll share that when it's ready. Uh, but anything else you want to know, you can go to our website. That's our home base, girlsongames.ca. Don't forget, if you want to come and be part, or you want to just sign up and let the system automate it for you and be part of this podcast fantasy draft, you can do that by going to uh, the uh, Discord channel discord.me slash girls and games coming to hang out uh 1 p.m on sunday the 14th of january we will be there and that's it we finished our first episode of 2024 next week we will talk about our favorite games of 2023 i played three games the ad is quite uh, quite all right you can talk about those three games you played a lot of those three games didn't you i played no maybe i played five 
I feel like I played two small indie games in the middle of those long ass games. We'll but, yeah. talk about that. I, we I'm will just, talk about that. I'm just like really excited about like comparing my games of the year from the five games I played to like Joel, who was like powering yeah. through games. Yeah. Like it was nobody's business. Yeah. Thank God um, for Notion because I have a list. Yeah. I like, I want to learn about your games so that I can add them to my backlog and play go. more games. <laughs> Perfect. Bye, everybody. Bye.